Hello, everyone. We're going to start on the hour. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to CPAacademy.org. My name is Lady Maya, and I'm happy to welcome you into today's webinar on Free Your QuickBooks Online Data with Google Sheets and Geocon. Our presenter today is Kelly Gonsalves. And before we get started, I want to go through some housekeeping items and do some technical checks to make sure everything is working. First, if you don't mind going over to the GoToWebinar Questions panel, which is located on the right hand side of your screen, please let me know that you can hear me and see the slides on your screen. And feel free to let me know where you're listening in from. If anyone is having any technical trouble, please let me know in that questions panel. Please keep in mind there are quite a few of you and I'll do my best to get around to each of you as quickly as I can. All right, let's see where everyone's listening in from. I see Inglewood, John saying hi Kelly. All right, Atlanta, Delaware, Dallas, Nebraska, hi Scott. All right, now that I know everything is working, let's go through some housekeeping for credit. This is a one hour webinar and qualifies for one CPE credit. The way you earn that credit is fairly straightforward. Just stay logged in for 50 minutes of our allotted time and answer the poll questions. We'll have a total number of four polls during today's webinar and to earn full credit, you need to answer at least three of those polls. CPE will be issued by the end of the day today and will be available in your cpacademy.org account. I also wanna let you know that we are recording today's webinar and the archive will be made available to you by the end of the day as well. We also recommend that you take the time to download today's presentation materials, which can be found in the GoToWebinar side panel. Now that we're all set, let's turn today's fantastic webinar over to our superstar presenter. Kelly, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, as Lady mentioned, my name is Kelly Gonzalez and I'm going to be speaking to you guys today about um, freeing your data from QuickBooks Online and being able to use Google Sheets uh, to do that. Uh, so Geocon is the app that we're going to be discussing, and it's the connector, so to speak, that's going to allow you to pull your information out of QuickBooks, and you can clean it up, you can change it, you can eliminate some of it, um, you can even add new data in. So we're going to go over some different scenarios with you guys, um, just to tell you who I am a little bit. I am located in New York City. Uh, I have a bookkeeping firm called Totally Booked. Uh, I also have some other companies with some fantastic people. Uh, one of them is Totally SEO, where we do SEO specifically for accountants and bookkeepers. Uh, Ideation Think Forward is a nonprofit that we're forming to help with uh, educating accounting students on what the real world is like when they start working in the field and Leading Leading Machine Marks is where we create some cool swag for accountants, bookkeepers, and apps um, all around some fun stuff like mugs and t-shirts, et cetera. Uh, and my partner on that is Kristen and she will actually be in the chat if you guys have any questions along with uh, Yelena who's joining us from Geocon. Uh, so Yelena has chosen to stay off mic but if you do have questions specifically about the app, she will be in there to answer them for you. Um, and she is a total, like, super duper power user. And so if you're already using Geocon, this is an opportunity to ask her some questions as well. Um, some things that I am into, uh, water sports. <laughs> I love paddle boarding uh, and I go literally every chance that I get, uh, regardless of where I am. Um, I am a big fan of In-N-Out, but I live in New York City, so I can only really get it when I visit other states. And I have a Yorkie named Nina, who is my whole world and I absolutely adore. So that's just some information about me. Um, and then actually, Kristen, if you could launch the first polling question so that we can kind of get that one started. Okay. okay, the polling question, are you currently using Google Sheets? Yes, no, or kind of? And we'll leave this open for just a couple minutes. And the first area we're going to cover is just some similarities and how Google Sheets is very um, close to Excel. So we want to see who's using it and kind of go from there. Okay. 
And we'll keep the poll open for just a, a few more seconds, about uh, 15 more seconds. Uh -huh. Looks like we have almost everyone answering. And five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Okay, so we got 92% of you voted. Um, it looks like 33% are using Google Sheets currently, uh, 39 are not, and 27 are kind of. Um, so I would say I definitely fell in the kind of category for a long time, especially because a lot of programs would only allow me to use Excel, like QuickBooks Online. Uh, so I feel you, I understand. <laughs> um, so we created this chart uh, so that we could kind of show what the differences were between Excel and Google Sheets um, and highlight some of the benefits of using Google Sheets. One very uh, big benefit, and I think it's probably the first one that comes up when you Google something like this, is that you can collaborate in real time. So if you're working with your clients, if you're working with your team, uh, whatever the case might be, you're able to add other um, basically Gmail or Google users to Google Sheets or that specific sheet, I should say, uh, that document, and you'll be able to collaborate with them. So as you're going through and let's say updating numbers or adding comments, whatever it might be, you'll be able to do that live with, with your team, your client, so on. Um, and Excel is a little different. You can add comments and stuff like that, but then you're gonna have to send it back out, pull it back in. This is everything live. Um, the other thing is that you can share directly from your sheet. So you can share out from the sheet itself rather than having to, let's say, download or share the workbook or email it to somebody. It's something that you can just share right directly from it. It does automatically save to your Google Drive. Um, you can manage different versions with version history, very similar to Excel. Um, add formulas. So basically, I haven't come across any formulas that were avail that are available, sorry, available only in Excel that weren't, I wasn't able to pull into Google Sheets. Uh, so you're able to pull in formulas, add formulas, they have a whole menu for you to pull up and see all of the different things that you can use. And then on top of that, they have suggestions for what they think might work for you while you're in there. Um, similar to let's say an auto sum or something like that in Excel. So you do have options there as well. Um, you can record your macros, uh, you can create filters and then filtered views. The other thing that's nice about Google Sheets because it's live, they do have options for suggestions. So there's a little menu that pops up in the lower right hand corner and you can pull, let's say this you know, beautiful data table that you've created and make it into a graph or a chart of some sort, pie chart, graph chart, whatever you'd like to make it into. Um, they have a little assistant that helps you create those things. Create pivot tables, uh, create charts manually, and then set notifications. So you do have a lot of similar options. It's not that you're kind of sacrificing anything to use Google Sheets over Excel, and that's the point that we wanted to make. A lot of accountants, especially even I when I first started, I started using Excel because that's what I was told was you know, necessary. So I paid for my Excel subscription. I got in there and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to need this. I have to use this. This is my only option. Um, but now that I've discovered Geocon and I'm using that, I'm able to pull all of the same information out of QuickBooks Online. And then I'm also able to push back in without having to use Excel or a CSV file. Uh, so I would say it's been pretty game changing. Um, and a cost eliminated, which I, when I first started, I was like, what, I have to pay for this thing that I'm not even sure if I'm ever gonna use it. <laughs> um, so using Google Sheets was always my preference and now I can actually use it for pretty much everything. Um, another thing to point out is that Google Sheets is operating system crossover a bowl, if you will. Uh, so whether you're using a Mac or a PC, you still have the option of pulling up Sheets. Um, even on a Chromebook, you'll be able to pull up Sheets. Uh, and then, you know, download the icon to your desktop, you'll be able to access it. Google Sheets gives you the op option of working offline as well. So you do have some options where you don't have to be live, let's say it's tied to Wi-Fi, whatever it might be, you can still use it. Um, I already mentioned that it's, you know, less cost because it's free. If you have a Gmail account, you're able to get Google Sheets, it comes with it. Um, and then, you know, your Google Drive is whatever size it is, and that's all included. Um, the Google ecosystem is nice. You can tie it into um, Docs, which is like their replacement for Word Docs. They have Slides, which is a replacement for PowerPoint. 
So there's a whole ecosystem of apps that you can use that are included. And then again, major is real-time collaboration. Uh, so now we're gonna move into using QuickBooks Online with Geocon and Google Sheets. And that's it. <laughs> So do you data cleanup in QuickBooks? Um, yes, no, or sometimes. I guess sometimes it's technically yes, but often or only once in a while, I guess. Well, I know some people hate doing cleanup. <laughs> so maybe sometimes should have been when absolutely necessary. This time of year, I think that regardless of whether we like doing them, we wind up doing a lot of cleanups. Okay, we've got about 15 more seconds on the poll. So if you have an answer, rush back to your computer and do so. <laughs> Did we get that CPE credit. There we go. Yep. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So it looks like the majority, I would say majority is yes, because we do have the sometimes in there. So 31% for yes, 38% no, and 31% sometimes. I would say I probably fall into the sometimes as well. So I don't do cleanups, let's say every month, but when I do need to do them, I want to have a reliable tool to get everything in. Um, and that's how I discovered Geocon. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go over some basics of Geocon and how it works. And to do that, I'm actually going to share a video that we've created and talk you through it. So the first one that we're going to go through is how to download your QBO data from QuickBooks Online to uh, Google Sheet. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna pull up the video, but I'm also going to show you where you would find um, how to install Geocon. So when you go to apps.com, and this is you know the QBO app store, you can also go directly to Geocon's website and you pull up Geocon. When you click to learn more, and this is different than other apps, that's why I'm pointing it out. When you click to learn more, it's gonna bring you over to their site and you're gonna install. When you go to install your free trial, you're actually going to be installing it into Google Sheets as an extension. So it's gonna show up in here under Google Sheets for Geocon, I'm sorry, Geocon for QuickBooks. So I just wanted to point that out, that it's not something where you are installing it against QuickBooks Online. In this case, you're actually installing it onto Google Sheets and that's where you're gonna be primarily controlling it. So when I pull up these videos, you're gonna see that we're pulling everything from Google Sheets, not directly from QuickBooks, um, and how it connects and everything else. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And now I will start the video. Okay. So we go into the extension, like I just mentioned. Now we're already signed into our QuickBooks online company. And we're going to be pulling in a report that we're going to design ourselves. So we're going to decide here what it is that we want to get out of QuickBooks Online. In this case, it's expensive. And you're going to see that we can set, we can customize the date, we can customize all the fields. So right here, we're setting up our parameters. You're going to be able to move your columns around. You're going to be able to um, choose even what parts of that data you're interested in seeing. So we're using you know, some older data from a QuickBooks file so that we were able to get you guys what you needed to see. Uh, so in this case, we chose all the fields and then we decided maybe we don't need all of the fields. So we're gonna reorder them into what we wanna see first. And then we're gonna deselect the ones that we don't need. So one thing that I can say is it's gonna pull a lot of data from QuickBooks and you're gonna have to determine what it is that you wanna see, what it is that you wanna use, what's important to you. And we moved all that to the top so that when it pulled up into Google Sheets, we were able to see what we needed to see first, right? So in this case, we're looking at all of the options for what will come out of QuickBooks Online when we're looking at expenses. So you may not realize that 
on the back end of things, there are a lot of fields and parts of QuickBooks that make up what we see when we log into it and when we're using it. And so in this case, we're moving around the fields that we maybe don't need to see right away, but have decided to keep. Um, so I'm gonna let the video play so you can see what's going on. We're going to move our transaction date. We're going to want to see some of the details of the lines, see the description that comes in, that comes in from the bank. And this is all data that's already been added to QuickBooks. So you've already passed the bank feed, you've added it to your books, you've given it a description, and now it's actually in there so we can pull the information. And we're moving around so that you guys can really see what's going on and how many options you have. And again, this is to manipulate the order that it shows up in, how we want to see it, not what's going to show up. Okay. So then in here, we can decide if we want to have it open a new sheet. You can decide if you want to give it a name. Um, there are some different options for if you want to see the link to QuickBooks, we're specifically pulling Chase expenses, so Chase credit card expenses for this client. We're telling it that we want to filter by only the account reference, so the account name that has Chase in it. So we know that this Chase credit card is named Chase credit card, and then what order we want to see it in. There we go. And then you have the option to refresh this. So I'll show you what that looks like. And basically you can have it save this report and then refresh every hour, every week, every month, every day, um, and then get alerts for when new data is added if you want to. Uh, so this is what has pulled, right? So we put in the order we wanted to see it in. We know that it came out of QBO. We know what the account name was, which is Fred's Chase in this case. The transaction date. We're looking at the payees. We're looking at the um, bank tax that came through, and then the amount. Now, there's a whole bunch of other data, and we'll scroll over so you can see that. There's a whole bunch of other data, but the reason that we moved this all to the left side was so that we would be able to see it right away, and we knew that this is what we wanted to look for. And this is all that back end data that I had mentioned. So different um, line items, whether it's billable or not, whether it was taxable or not, different IDs that tie into the back end of QuickBooks, more, let's say, programmer related, not necessarily related to us. Um, but that is what comes out of QuickBooks Online into this Google Sheet. Now, keep in mind that this is Google Sheets. This is not Excel. And so this is live, right? So if you just wanted to take this and keep it, and add comments to it, you wanted to you know, add your client to it, add your team to it, you now have this live sheet that you can work with. Um, we're going to show you some other cool stuff though that it does. So now we're gonna show you how to refine or revise your data. And let me just pull that up. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna show you how to Clean up essentially the data that you've pulled. So you're going to go into Google, I'm sorry, Google Sheets, then into GeoCon. You're now going to pull this report. And in here, you're going to see that we've already done the expenses basically using the same data as before. And we're going through to see what we want to change. There we go. So we're noticing that Bob's market does not have. A vendor name associated. So that column to directly to the left of where our mouse is is showing us that there's no vendor name on these expenses. And so we've decided that we want to go in and change the missing vendor name, so to speak, 
and add it back in. So we're going to be able to do that all in one fell swoop, so to speak. We can add Bob's Market as a vendor here. Um, one thing to note is that Bob's Market is already a vendor, so it's something that we can do. Your vendors have to be in there previously, so there's also another template that you can use to upload vendors, mass upload vendors, mass upload um, clients or customers. There's a couple of different things that you can do with it, but in this case, specifically, we know that Bob's Market is in there, because there it is, and now we want to make sure that it shows for all of the Bob's Market um, expenses. We're going to copy and paste it into the empty field. And then I think we did one more for the Jensen's. Yep, Gelson's, not Jensen's. <laughs> So we did the same for Gelson. So now we're adding back in two different vendor names um, from the same you know, expense report that we pulled. And we're gonna tell Geocon that we wanna push back into ClickList and update the vendor name. Now you can see that Bob's Market is our vendor with no apostrophe and the line description that came from the bank is Bob with an apostrophe. So making sure that we're spelling it the right way from QBO is also important. So now we've decided to, we're going to update, modify, delete templates for the current sheet. And we're going to upload the data back in, right? So we chose to upload back to our client's file. I'm going to choose all rows in this case because it knows what we've pulled and what needs to be changed. We know that it's expenses. And then in this case, we have the option to insert, update, or delete. And we're going to choose update because we're updating existing transactions inside of QBO. You're changing the table header because A1 already exists, so we're using that already. We're telling it to start from A2. This is showing the mappings inside of QBO. Again, a little bit on the back end, but you'll see what field fills in essentially what field in QuickBooks, so which cell and which row we're going to update. And then we tell it to execute. And so now we're going to be able to see, one, whether it worked or not. So in this Google Sheet, we can see that it was a success. We did not create anything new. In this case, we just updated existing data. So created is going to say false. That's a good thing. We're going to be able to see when it happened. That's the timestamp all the way to the right. So you do have like a whole log of the things that you've changed. Now we can see that Bob's Market has been updated. And then we're going to show you in QuickBooks Online specifically where that updated. There she comes. There we go. So you'll see on this report beforehand, Bob's Market is missing from some of the lines that we know the bank has told us it was from Bob's. And when we refresh the report, bam, now we have Bob's Market for each of those expenses um, and Gelson's, not to forget Gelson's as well. <laughs> so we were able to add vendors, um, existing vendors, but we were able to add them to the expenses that we pulled out into Google Sheets from QuickBooks. All right. All right. Next up, we're going to show you how to add brand new data straight from your Google Sheet into QuickBooks. So let's say that you have to um, add some expenses, right? So you have a spreadsheet, maybe your client's giving you a spreadsheet of something that they've kept, and you have to add these expenses back into QuickBooks. Uh, so in this case, we're using that same expense report that we downloaded because we can use this as a template to now create new data in QuickBooks Online. So we're Going through, we're adding a whole new expense, but we're copying one of the old ones so that we can create the formula that we need or make sure that we're keeping the same format, I should say. So in this case, it's going to be creating a whole new one, but using that same format, we're going to have to remove the transaction ID. So in QuickBooks Online and really any SAS program, you're going to see that 
on the tail end of the URL, there's usually a number, a reference number. What we're telling it is QuickBooks, hey, we know that you have all of these expenses already and they already have their own IDs. We're going to add a new one in and QuickBooks knows to create a new ID for that next expense, for that new expense. So now we're going through, getting down to that test run. So in this case, we're going to put in a test expense, right? We know that it's going to go on to that Chase credit card, what the date is. We don't have a vendor for it. We want it to say test run in the description, and we wanted to give it a dollar amount. Thousand dollars. <laughs> Making sure that's all correct. And then we're just going to scroll over and remove any IDs that we want to make sure we don't reference again um, so that we're not manipulating any data that's already existing. We're taking out that line item amount because in this case we know it's one line item and it's a thousand dollars. We don't want to change this to be billable, no tax related codes. In this case, so here you're going to see this is our classes. These are our classes, P03. We're removing the class because for this one we don't want to use the class. We're getting rid of that class ID so that QuickBooks is not confused. We're giving it an account name to tie it to. In this case, we used one that we knew existed. So you can use either the account name or you can use the account number. We knew that suspense existed and so we were putting that in there. And then we're getting rid of the identifier because it's gonna find it based on that account name. We're removing any data that was downloaded previously when it comes to a timestamp and create a date because we're creating it now. And then we're getting rid of anything that was used previously when we pulled in this data. So don't forget, this is an existing sheet that we pulled in. We're just making sure that we get the format correct. Okay, so now we're pulling up our Geocon menu and we're saying, hey, we want to update this to have a new expense, right? We're updating QuickBooks. So instead of updating, we're actually going to insert new data. So that's the different options when you toggle between update, insert, and delete. In this case, we're inserting new data. We're saying it's the currently selected row. If you'll see that we've highlighted the row, we wanted to do a specific row number. And now, not something that we're really scheduled to do because we have to put the data in. So we're going to execute it and save the template. Okay. So we're going to scroll over to see if it imported. And we can see that it was a success and that we created an expense in this case. So that's true this time. You can see when it was done, it has a new ID number, a new reference number. And when we refresh our report in QuickBooks, we will now see our new expense. So it's Fred's you know, credit card, Chase card. The other two on here, or the other three on here were credits. So don't mind that those are negative. And here we are. We have our expense. It went to our suspense account, which is what we had typed in for the account name. Dollar amount, we, just, we deliberately left it with no information as far as a description or a name, but it has imported into QuickBooks. So if you think about this in a larger, on a larger scale, if you have a client that's coming to you, um, I recently had a client that switched from Quicken to QuickBooks Online, and they needed me to upload all of their customers and then follow up with uploading all of their invoices. I was then able to also upload all of their payments uh, so that they didn't have to recreate each individual transaction every time. Um, and it just saved us so much time being able to pull everything in and basically import all of our data. And I have one last video for you guys. And this is going to be if you need to change data inside of QuickBooks Online. So in this case, now we've created this expense. We did this test run. We want to change the amount, let's say. Or if you have 
I would say think of this as reclassify transactions on a really more detailed scale, if you will. Um, so if you needed to go in and change existing data and reclassify, you're not able to change the amount. Uh, you can really only update the account. So in this case, you could change the description, you could change the amount, um, you can pretty much change anything about the transaction that you're looking to change and then push it back into QuickBooks. So in this case, we're going to pull up the expense. We can see it in QuickBooks, $1,000 tied to this expense account. We're showing that those are credits and we didn't want to alarm anybody <laughs> that they didn't show up in our Geocon report. That's on purpose because we really only wanted to see expenses. Now we decided that we wanted to change the amount on this transaction. Let's say it was wrong for whatever reason. Go over, eliminate. So, yep, we're going to change the line item. Again, it's just one line. So, in this case, we're going to update that as well. And now we want to make sure that we did it right. <laughs> and now we also want to change um, the account. So, oh, okay. So now we're going to go back into our GCon menu. We're going to upload this data into QuickBooks Online. So in this case, we're going to tell it to use all rows because there's really just the one row. And then we're going to say update the data. Telling it again, start from A2 because A1 is our blank header. And it's going to update the result column so that you can see that true false situation. And then execute and save. So we can see that it was a success. We know that it should be in QuickBooks. We're going to go back to QuickBooks, refresh the report. So we can see that it was $1,000 tied to this expense account. And now it is $500 tied to this expense account and still tied to that Chase credit card. That's what we've been using this whole time. So we've been using the same data. We've just been able to change it into different, um, different ways. So now we've decided that, oh, I have my $500 expense, but really it's in the wrong account. And so we've decided that we're going to change this as well. There we go. So another account that we definitely knew existed was something called a safe. So it's basically cash on hand. And so we're wanting to make sure that we move the transaction over. Uh, the great thing is, if you remember, we pulled one expense report from QuickBooks Online into Geocon or into Google Sheets using Geocon. And now we're able to update all of this information and just keep going until we've gotten it to what we need it to be. So imagine a situation where maybe somebody, so I have clients that use you know, Shopify and they use all these different connectors. Let's say they've now connected um, an app that's pulled in a bunch of transactions that are incorrect. I'm able to go in and zero those out. I'm able to go in and change the account that they tied to. Let's say they were using undeposited funds, but it should have been a clearing account. I can go in and change all of those things using these templates and using this system. So again, we're going to tell it we're going to use this row to update this specific transaction. All of our stuff is in place from the last time we did it. These are our mappings. And then execute and save. So we also named it for Bob's Market. And then we see that it is a success. So let's go back over to QuickBooks Online, refresh our report. Showing that we didn't have a name, showing that it was in the suspense account. And now we have a name and it's been saved to the safe account. And we obviously changed the amount. So this is just some of the cool stuff that you can do uploading changing, cleaning, et cetera, all the different data um, in QuickBooks Online. Um, again, major 
game changer for cleanup, uh, but specifically, I mean, even if you're just having to recreate a file and you need to get some data in there from, let's say, an existing system like Quicken, like my client this time, um, this is something that's going to really let you do those things. So just to recap, right? So you can add data, you can remove data, you can replace data, you can correct data, you can fill in new data, you can do a lot of things with data. Um, data for some people, but in my case, data, right? So you can pull in singles, you can pull in a bulk upload, you can do all different transactions. Um, you can put in journals, expenses, invoices, um, I mean, payments. There's so many options for what you can do with this program. It's kind of insane. <laughs> so adding vendors, adding customers, classes, um, all of the things, changing uncategorized. Let's say you have a huge uncategorized transactions list. You can change all of those and have your client give you the answers. Uh, so, Kristen, if you can launch our next poll. Would your practice benefit from automated reporting? Yes, no, or it's worth considering. So in our next section, I'm going to show you how to pull some things from Geocon and then what that looks like when you're doing automated reporting. And we'll leave the poll up for another 10 seconds. And five, four, three, two, and one. Nice. Okay, so 93% of you voted. 40% uh, said yes, 23% said no, and 38% is worth considering. Um, so when it comes to automated reporting, um, there are some different ways you can do it, right? Uh, when it comes to QuickBooks Online, they give you kind of the simple create your report and then use that template to email out, let's say, a PDF you know, to your clients. Uh, you could do it to send some things to your team. Uh, what Geocon is going to let you do is create custom reports and it will automatically send them over to QuickBooks Online for you. I'm sorry, not QuickBooks Online. It'll send them over to Google Sheets for you and then continue to refresh them as um, as you choose. So it can be hourly, uh, daily, weekly, monthly. Um, and then you can also set a report, an alert for when that new data comes in. So if it is, let's say, a collections report or something where you want to see open receivables, you can have that refresh every time something new is added and then send you a new report. You can share those with your clients. You can share them with your team. There's a lot of different options. Uh, so, just some of the different ways you could use it, but you're missing money, missing commitments, right? So, you have open AP, you have recurring expenses, outstanding debts, uh, missing data. So, let's say you have this uncategorized transactions report that you create and you share it with your client. You can have them just go in, make the changes to what account it should be, or leave you a comment on what it should be. And then you could reformat that report to upload it straight back into QBO. So you'd be able to use what we had just showed you in manipulating that data and changing it and then pushing it back into QuickBooks Online. Um, but then you also have a chance to you know, request information, notify your clients on what's missing. You can have it do it for you. The, the beauty of uh, Google Sheets is that it's always live, right? So it's always online, as is QuickBooks. So you're using two products, QuickBooks Online, but you're using two products that are constantly updating and when you're kind of pulling those two things together, you can get all of this information kind of unlimited. Uh, so I'm going to go over with you guys and just show you a little bit on my screen. I can pull up the right one. Where's my unicorn? Here she is, my little unicorn. Okay. So what I did was I created some different um, reports that I've pulled from Geocon, sorry, from QuickBooks Online through Geocon into Google Sheets. Um, and I've created what I would consider somewhat like a dashboard, right? So I can save this template and have it constantly update and refresh with new data. 
I can set it for, let's say, the 15th of every month. So I know that everything's been reconciled, everything's been entered from the client. And now I want them to get, you know, their PL, their balance sheet, cash flow statement, whatever it might be. Um, and I'll show you some custom reports. But in this case, I did a PL, a balance sheet, and cash flow. So I told it to pull in my PL by class. I'm sorry, by product and service, and then had all of that come in so that you can see what those totals look like over on my balance sheet. Again, just pulled it in for the you know past year or well, last year, and then a quick cash flow for, cash flow report showing all of 2020, right? And then here's the cool thing: I told it that I wanted it to keep updating as I added new information to QuickBooks. So in here, it gives me a log of every time that it was able to pull data, whether it was successful or not, what the data was what the company was, where it came from, and then where it sent the information to. So in this case, that's me, how to she 123 at Gmail. Um, I had it email to me every time that one of these things was executed. And so I'm actually gonna show you what the email looks like, because this is also something that you can set up uh, here. So I did a workflow test email, says, you know, hi client, here's your PL, balance sheet and cash flow reports as we discussed. It's going to give them a link to open it in Google Sheets, and then it's also going to give them this little guy down here where they can just pull it right up. So it's data that's constantly updating, and you're not having to go in and change anything. It's doing it for you. Uh, so it's giving them all their information that they've asked for or that you've provided them, uh, and it's doing it in the back in the background, so to speak. You're not having to do it for them. Uh, let me just open one more. we go. Uh, so here we go. So I created another one here. And in this one, I did a little bit more custom stuff. So I did have a PL because I, I feel like that's always my default. I start with the PL. Uh, but then I did aged payables. So I wanted to see what was outstanding. In this case, we pulled some old data again from a different file. And I wanted to see how old everything was. So in something like this, you could have this go to maybe somebody on your team that handles payables. Maybe it's going to the company owner if they're paying their own bills. Maybe it's going to their in-house person, whoever's in charge of getting you know, checks out the door, whatever the case might be. You can create this report and you can have it done. So you can do it on a periodic basis. You can say, I want this to go out every, you know, every week or every Monday, whatever it is. You can even decide the time that you want it to send. So if you want it to come out 2 a.m. every time, you can do it that way. Um, you can also do it based on if there's a variable. So if something has changed and now you want to see an updated report, you can do that as well. Um, I did an expense report because I wanted to see uncategorized expenses specifically. So this I had mentioned earlier, using this to tell your clients when something's missing. So giving them, let's say, the date of the transaction, telling them that it's uncategorized because we've set it that way in QuickBooks, and then any identifiers that might be in here. So in this case, it was just a reference name. I didn't actually pull in any of the information for it, but if it had said uncategorized expense and let's say in and out my favorite place, right? Uh, it was a credit card expense, they would see that it was from In-N-Out and then I would wanna know what it was for. So giving them the ability to then come in here, they can make comments, they can give me updates, they can send me an email, they, however they wanna do it, whatever the case is, they can tell me what these expenses were. And lastly, I pulled a uh, invoice report. So I wanted to see, in this case, I said, tell me everything from January through December for the entirety of 2019. Uh, and I wanted to see specifically what was past due. So if I set the date of, let's say, the you know, 31st of December, and I wanted to see everything that was still outstanding at that point, this would give me all of the invoices that I was still owed. Um, when I first started, I had a client that, you know, we watched cash, cash flow pretty closely, and he wanted to know what was outstanding every Monday morning before he started his week, before he spoke to any clients. He wanted to make sure that if if he was speaking to somebody that did owe the company money, that he was sure to mention it in that call um, and you know, just kind of be conscious of what was outstanding. So in this case, something like this would have been really helpful for him to be able to just get a report every Monday morning, let's say 8 a.m., he you know, fires up his computer and bam, there's this Google sheet that's constantly updating, telling him all of the information he needs right here. So when I set this up, I used the filter just to show what was still outstanding, I used a filter to show me only after a certain date what was going on. Um, all of those things were options. 
Uh, so you're able to really customize what's coming in and out. And then in this case, let's say in these expenses, you'd be able to use this to then push the data back into QuickBooks. Um, but yeah, you can create so many custom reports. You can do so much with it. Uh, so I'm gonna fold this down so we can get back over here. Uh, but yeah, so this is basically a status check. It's not just for reporting. It really is gonna give you the opportunity to make a lot of changes. It's gonna give you the opportunity to work with your clients more collaboratively and your team. And that autopilot option, right? So let's not forget that it's constantly working for you. It's constantly running in the background. Um, and then you have the option to alert, like it will alert you, right? So notifications and alerts when something changes, when something's freshly generated, um, basically anything's outside of the parameters that you've already set up. So it knows something's wrong and you can do that as well. Um, okay, so uh, some ideas for external reporting. So let's say it's for you know clients, profit and loss statements, reports by class, transaction reports, internal, maybe you need to see AR, so receivables, payables, um, printing those custom transaction reports. So I know that you're able to create some of these in QuickBooks, but the option to then be able to change all of that data, to update that data, push it back in, those are all things that would take you a lot more time to do in QuickBooks manually. Um, that uncategorized transaction report is gold, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so that one's a major um, a major report for me. I'm able to ask my um, clients questions immediately, and they're able to get it back to me without having to kind of jump through hoops or go into QuickBooks. Another reason, they don't have to go into QuickBooks for this. So if you are um, the type of practice that does not want your client in QuickBooks, totally understand. This would then give them the information they need without ever having to sign in. Um, the automations, it's constantly running in the background. It's constantly live. And those notify notifications and alerts, you're setting up different reasons. So alerts are gonna alert you to when something changes on those reports. The notifications are gonna be those emails that you receive. Um, and then it does also have the option to build dashboards. So this is something that you would wanna book a demo with Geocon for specifically, uh, but it can connect to any BI solution. So business intelligence solution where you want to create some dashboards. So if you want to take this data and then make it into, like I said, some charts, you want it to be a little bit prettier, you want to do some color, you know, color changes, color coding, maybe you want to have a whole presentation every month for your clients, you can plug into those dashboards and it's going to help you um, do that essentially, right? So different finance, financials, different KPIs, you can pull all of that information it's just a little bit more advanced than what we're covering in this webinar, but they can definitely walk you through it. And then our last polling question. Okay, I'm gonna run it. <laughs> Where is it? There we go. Are you interested in hearing from Geocon? I'd say for sure, if you want to hear from them, they're going to be able to go over those advanced options with you far more detailed than I have. <laughs> also, I'd say too, Kelly, there's the um, opportunity to learn how other people are using this. Yeah. Because I know for me, the big payoff is I have a lot of clients who tend to run their cash by how much cash they have in the bank. So automatically generating something like an uncleared transactions report mm -hmm. um, for the bank so they can see how much money they actually have outstanding that could clear any minute is a big deal. Yeah, um, I agree. So we'll yeah. give a couple more seconds on the poll. And five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome. Okay, so 
So this is just some more features and use cases. I'll leave this up on the screen as we finish up. Um, but you know, you do have the option of shareable templates. You can use them between different clients in QuickBooks, um, being able to pull the same data from different company files. Um, you have a workflow builder. So if you want to create these reports and have them automate constantly, you can do that as well. Um, bulk imports like journal entries, uh, expenses, invoices, basically any data that you need to get into QuickBooks, this is going to do it. Um, Real-time collaboration with QuickBooks, I mean, sorry, with Google Sheets, consolidated reporting across different companies, across different um, parts of different companies. So you have somebody that has multiple companies um, and cross-platform translation and conversion. Or, yeah, conversion. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is time. All right, you guys passing it back over to me. We're all set. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to wrap up with today's webinar. We here at CPA Academy will process credit later today. That will be available in your cpaacademy.org accounts within 24 hours. Everyone will have an opportunity for a full webinar evaluation. Those links to the evaluation are available in your cpaacademy.org accounts as well as your email. Thanks again to our wonderful presenter, Kelly, for such a great presentation. We are always appreciative of your time and insights and warm thanks to all of you and the audience for your participation today. We urge you to take a look at your cpaacademy.org My Account page and see all of the resources that we've made available to you there and to take a look at the other fantastic webinars we're able to offer. We hope to see you all in future webinars and hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks everyone. Thank you.